Hi everyone, uh, welcome to ADC 2021. I'm Skizzy and in this uh, talk I'll be exploring how you can make uh, modern electronic music with JavaScript and web audio. A little bit about me, uh, I'm a web developer. I've been programming since 2008. Uh, for the last eight years, however, uh, music has been my primary hobby. Uh, I make uh, mostly techno and using a mix of hardware and software is how I approach my music production. Now the gear I have is an Electribe uh, and I also have a guitar. The DAW that I use is uh, Reaper for the most part. I'm also a big fan of free noise. Uh, and coming to programming, my default go-to for prototyping anything is Python. And these days, uh, I'm also exploring Highlang, which is a Lisp uh, written for the Python ecosystem. So my goal uh, about two years back was to make music in JavaScript that sounds as good as what you get from a DAW. And the result is uh, what I'm calling as bitrhythm. And I believe I've achieved the goal uh, to a good 80%. And now, uh, one interesting thing about Bitrhythm is I've also used literate programming for writing it. And so you can probably read the source code uh, with my notes and, and bookmarks as well. And it should take uh, about an afternoon for you to do it. Uh, now, uh, coming to uh, literate programming, one reason why I picked it up is because uh, when you revisit a project after some time, it feels like you're lost, even though you have written the code. And I wanted to solve this problem. And I was working on a completely different project, but it turned out that uh, that problem was there even for Bitrhythm. So in the end, I implemented my own version of uh, literate programming, uh, and it uses Python's Jinja and COG preprocessor to implement a very bare bones approach to literate programming. So uh, to give a brief overview of what I'll be presenting in this talk, I will be covering Bitrhythm. Uh, I will be covering uh, how uh, you can map DOS to JavaScript. I'll be showcasing a demo a tutorial, and I will be going into the bits and pieces of Bitrhythm, uh, which I'm calling them as DAW primitives. Uh, some of the Primitives must be familiar to you guys as well. Uh, there's music loop, uh, there's uh, knobs and guards, and there's dials and samples. And if you have used pure data or max, uh, it might feel familiar to you what I have done here. Now, another uh, thing that I would like to touch on in this talk is how where does Bitrhythm fit into the existing music coding genres? I will try to give some definitions for the way I, I see code being applied to music. And I will be defining something called as hard coding uh, for my, the approach that I have taken. And I will also showcase a brief uh, demo of what is possible with a text-driven approach, namely version control. Now, I will be wrapping up the talk with the limitations uh, that I've faced and uh, what I plan to do in the future. Now, one assumption I am having here is, I will assume that uh, you guys are familiar with some DAW workflow and you have some basic understanding of JavaScript. Uh, vanilla JavaScript is fine. So just to give an overview of some of the earlier attempts that I did for trying to mix code with music, I tried to mess with Python and I used the port MIDI library to interact with my COG Electribe, which is a hardware instrument. And by sending it MIDI message messages, I was able to trigger the four on four drum loop. And I was also able to use the same thing with JavaScript and OSC protocol through which I could control renoise. And there are also some initial algorithm scripts that I explored for messing with uh, MIDI and OSC notes. 
Now, how do Ableton, FL Studio, Logic make music? Now, to give a, a rock band as an example, you have the drummer, you have the guitarist, you have the synth player. Now, in a live setting, all these players will play their instruments and you record them, uh, record the sound output with a mic. The mic uh, output, all of their outputs collected together, you get a cassette, a single, and a, uh, and a CD. Now, this is something we replicate in software. So instead of a guitarist, you get a virtual instrument and you get to design virtual notes and you get to imitate virtual software pedals. And this is how in software you get to make music. And this everything is virtual in software. Now, the key advantage I feel for with DOS is you get to uh, control the editing a lot. So there's a lot of editing control that you get, which otherwise in a live setup, you wouldn't be able to do that. Now, even electronic music for a good deal of its initial history was produced by hardware setups. Orbital is one of my favorite bands, and I believe they still have a live setup where they play 909s and 303s live. Now, if I want to make a electronic track with JavaScript and web audio, I have to replicate whatever is there in the DAW. And I will have to map it one-to-one -to, -one to get the same quality and the same effect. So in some sense, what I've done in this is I have taken uh, Tone.js as the base, which supplies, with, which supplies me all the virtual instruments, which supplies me all the virtual effects. And then I use JavaScript to imitate the nodes and automation. And together with this, I was able to uh, get a good result in the end. Now, there is one aspect of music which I was not able to do in web audio and JavaScript, and that is the final mastering stage, where you get to add some, uh, some basic effects, equalizer things towards the final track. This is a bit difficult to do in JavaScript right now. And I believe in the future, it will be better. So right now, my setup is I do most of the things in Tone.js and JavaScript. I record the final output in uh, using Blackhole. And I store the final track in Reaper. And I apply some basic effects to it to create a song. And to give a brief, uh, uh, to give a screenshot of a typical DOS setup, you can uh, see this uh, image. This is FL Studio. Now you have some sequencer notation in the top right. You have the tracks at the bottom and each track acts as an instrument of sorts. Uh, typically you map one track to one instrument and for each track you can add effects and all the, all the tracks together merge into the master track where you can add further effects. Now, this setup needs to be replicated in JavaScript and web audio if you need to make music. Now, I'll be showcasing the first demo. Uh, there were some issues with screen recording, so I'll be mostly showcasing video demos. You can, however, interact with most of these demos on the website.
uh, as you can see uh, the sound output is as good as what you could expect from at least an electrive and if you have noticed some of the events were starting before i was doing any action and this is because i had pre programmed them to start when the bars hit a certain value uh, the knobs are moving on their own and some of the parameters only the only the section that you see on the screen where you see the mouse cursor those are the parts that i'm changing Ah, cool. So let me just present a brief uh, tutorial of Petrodom now. So, so you want to make a song, right? So for me, the first uh, thing that I do is decide on the theme of the song. and once i decide on the theme i select a few samples i think of the instruments i would like in the track and after doing that i then start to prototype some basic patterns which uh, i am inspired by uh, i will listen to some podcasts and see if uh, some dj has played a song that has really touched me and i'll try to see if i can replicate it uh, this is typically my workflow and uh how you how i would do that in bitrhythm so from the from the face of it you can see that it, there's a very minimalistic feel to bitrhythm i can add dials for example and for adding samples you can add any web url now when it uh, comes to the editing interface this is code mirror uh, and on in the background there is a canvas in which you can run p5 or webgl now i'll just briefly go through the code in this editor uh so here you can see i'm defining something called as a scene uh, which has some values this is fairly similar to the sequencer notation from fruity loops and here i define a function called noise synth i am using tone js as a noise generator uh, to create a simple snare kind of an effect i am connecting the noise generator to a channel and i also have a basic effect processing here where i am attaching a filter to the noise and i am adding a small amount of stereo with to it another instrument that i have defined below is uh, a stab a dub techno stab here i am creating six uh, waves three sawtooth three square and i am attaching a filter a reverb and a delay to the whole setup now this is very similar to what i would uh, do in a dog with uh, with multiple plugins now this is a helper function which i defined to trigger trigger all the previous synths in one go now there are some special functions that i have had to define in javascript once is uh, such a function so this as you can guess from the name it is only executed once at the start of the whole uh, song uh, here i typically initialize p5 i initialize a winamp based visualizer here there's a project called butter churn which has ported all the winamp presets to the web i initialize a few samples there's some handlers and if you see some the logic here i am initializing a variable called start snare now i'll be going into each of these elements in the future slides there's a special function called tweak and in tweak i 
define a knob and there's a spe another special function called always which executes every tick. Now here is where I define uh, some conditional logic where I get to start playing some instruments when the bars hit certain length. So I can start the kicks in the first four bars and then slowly I can move on to adding the snares in the hats. So now I will go into the uh, nitty gritty of bit rhythm. So the first thing is there's a canvas and code mirror. Code mirror is the editor that I use to edit all the JavaScript code. And the canvas allows you to initialize itself with P5 or WebGL based instructions. There's a small helper function called render loop, which I provide and you can hook into it and provide your own uh, render logic. Now, the core of the sound processing in Bitrhythm is done via, via a music loop. And this is the rough algorithm that I have. Uh, there's a delta that I calculate based on the tempo and the total number of lines. And, for, and I start the set interval timer. And in this, I get the latest code from the text editor. I calculate uh, a few special variables like is hit, which uh, is basically detecting when the kick has been uh, pressed inside the pattern. If there's an edit mode enabled, I only evaluate the old text. And if the edit mode is disabled, I evaluate the next current text. The, the special function transition is run when there's a flag called transition, which is selected. And just to show you that, uh, so execute transition will execute a transition function and edit will toggle the edit mode. I have mapped it to F10 and F9. So that way it is easy to edit. Now, when it comes to the interface, I, I'm simply using a dial, a circular dial, which is uh, unobservable. And you can subscribe to all the changes in the dial. Now, this is something I found quite uh, refreshing to use. And it reminded me of pure data where you could just simply drag and drop just the elements that you need to compose a track. And this is something I wish I could bring back to my Reaper workflow as well. So let's say I'm composing a track and I only have to meddle with some filter filters and some delays. But I see a lot of options when I'm composing a track in Reaper. Now, instead of that, I could have a much simpler option where I define the menus I want to be visible on a per project basis so that most of the options are hidden. I only see a minimal approach to the plugins and the options that I see. I've also implemented a basic sample browser, which you can use. I'm currently using some uh, music radar samples. Uh, there's some chip tune available and some uh, Game Boy samples. Now you can browse them and just uh, copy the URL to 
use them inside bitter them for the samples in the previous demos that you've heard i have been using samples from splice so coming to the patterns uh, now the advantage of a text based approach to making music is you can define your own dsls and here i have defined a dsl which is replicating fruity loops uh, sequencer notation and i have also taken some inspiration from renoise uh, tracker notation and i have uh, encoded all the details of each individual note inside square brackets currently i have implemented uh, support for volume pitch delay and pan now in this notation uh you can define uh, a typical four on four will look like x000 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 and x000 so that this is a typical four on four kick and in that sense it's quite uh, visible and intuitive and this is a very common notation now one in interesting hack i discovered is uh, in renoise the trouble is you have to use hexadecimals and it's always difficult to add them and for some strange reason i think we are still using roman numbers that way uh, because adding we are in the end adding alphabets so to counter that i have created another notation where i define backtick 0 as a which is 10 in hexadecimal and backtick 1 as b which is 11 in hexadecimal i find this much more easy to uh, do some mental arithmetic with and uh, this is this notation i mainly use for describing silences so if you have star backtick 1 that basically means there's 10 silences in the in the sequence now the dot character is used to signify note of event now i'm coining them as roma decimals and gypsy decimals just for fun and i think this is a better approach to dealing with hexadecimals in code now this is programming right so we can always use a global state to keep track of things that have happened in pure data i remember uh, there are a lot of counters that you use to keep track of things and it is much simpler when you're using javascript to do this uh, i can have a simple logic which says if uh, the kick has been hit thrice always play the crash so this is the kind of logic which uh, i found quite interesting to do in javascript now this is the big one and this is where i felt uh, a bit confident in saying i can sort of do what a doc can do in because automation is the key to making electronic music now my initial prototype was using midi knobs uh, there's web midi through which you can easily assign knobs to any parameter via javascript uh, you can also track mouse movements and attach it there's an xy pad which is available uh, one idea i was thinking was doing a dsl like total graphics where you go go up by 40 go down by 20 and design curves that way but the uh, endless asset banger project convinced me to model knobs directly the endless asset banger is a very fascinating project which plays a asset uh, techno endlessly for as long as you wish to and it uses random numbers to generate the knob values what i did was i instead of using random numbers i decided to use arrays directly and this way i know exactly where the knob positions are now this is how i define a knob in my code it has a ramp and the ramp is in this case 0.525 0.8 0.4 one so you can imagine that as the song is progressing the value of this will progress from 0.525 to 0.8 to 0.4 it will increase to 1 then decrease to 0.25 and so on till until it reaches the end now here you have two options you can either go back from 0.1 to 0.25 to 1 to 0.75 or you can stay at 0.1 which is the last value so that is decided by the direction flag 
if the direction is true it goes back and forth if the direction is false it stays at the last value now because my editing environment is live you can always change the log values and this way you can add new log positions as you are uh, progressing in the song now i also define a guard now a guard is something which allows you to put upper and lower limits on the knob values this is extremely useful for avoiding unnecessary frequencies and you can also uh, imagine this uh, to be applied for any knob twisting sometimes uh, when i'm programming my electrive when i move the knob a bit too much i get a distorted noise now having a guard there will help me avoid such uh, issues now this is something that i have yet to uh, explore fully but i believe it is a very unique thing that you can do with uh, javascript as you know in javascript observers are quite commonly used now initially i had suspected that i would only use observers for mapping the dials in the user interface but then later i realized you know in in the as the song is progressing i can have any number of internal actions which can be triggered now this is similar to what your data does with its bang operator and spigot so i think this approach of using observers can be used to sidechain anything so let's say i have a kick and i have a snare every time there's a kick i can observe that the kick has been you know uh, pressed and i can then say okay reduce the volume of the snare this way you get a very generic approach to controlling uh, any two parameters and linking them together now i i want to explore this much more in further examples but to take chords for an example if you look at a chord it is having a root note and it is surrounded by two other notes so i can design an observer such a way that i just think about the root note and the logic is thinking about the other notes that are side by side to the chord so chords can be also reduced and modeled with observers in uh, literature i have found this to be discussed under the name of constraint propagation and some of the earliest algorithmic composition tracks were using constraint propagation and i think it's a very powerful idea and in the gif that you see below i have uh, shown uh, what it means visually Uh, there's there's plenty of youtube videos which trigger chain reactions and i believe that is the exact thing you can do with observers you can start a gui action which can be a dial movement and that can keep triggering further actions down the line till you get uh, musical uh, effects now there are some miscellaneous hacks uh, alerts is something which is uh, i have wanted for a long time now when i'm uh, composing a track i write down when and where the uh, transition has to be made when and where the filter has to be cut off and since this is javascript i can just show a simple alert box and, and pads are uh, keyboard maps uh, if you the first eight samples are mapped to f1 f2 f3 f4 f5 and so on and at any point during the a song you can remap the keys to anything as a bonus i have taken the 303 synthesizer from the endless acid banger project and i have also included that here so now for a second demo and in this i will try to uh, use all the previous concepts in one song and this is sort of an experimental track and just to show that there are multiple styles possible i uh, i have chosen a hip hop approach and hip hop beat for this now common gear this stolen money by order of the peaky blinders
So this was uh, the second demo. Uh, one second, yeah. So as you can see, I'm able to get uh, a decent sound from this IDE that I've built. So where does this approach fit in the context of existing tools? And that is something I've been wondering uh, for the past few months. Uh, what kind of music can you do with this? Uh, so I would like to define music coding genres for a start. Uh, I define interactive coding as something which you, the user can interact with. If you remember, some of the earlier flash demos had drums and if you could download it on a web page and interact with the drums. And that is what I define as interactive coding. And in Bitrhythm, I can share the entire track as a URL so the listener can listen to it. He can manipulate it and create his own remix. And not only the listener, I can also send it to another artist and he can collaborate with me on the basis of a URL. I call this interactive coding. And algorithmic coding is when you see music as algorithms with experimental patterns. This was used to a great effect in the IDM music tracks. There's ambient music, there's generator music, and these days you also see machine learning approaches. So all these I club under algorithmic coding. Live coding is also something that uh, has gotten a good deal of uh, recognition these days. Now in live coding, coding itself is seen as an act of performance. So you will see that uh, they too start with a blank canvas and they write functions and the functions then trigger sequences and generate music. But I believe uh, in Bitrhythm, what I've seen is it's not live coding as such because I'm manipulating the sequencer uh, symbols for the most part. And I'm not doing any coding because I have pre-programmed the logic and that is running in the background. Adaptive coding is... Uh, what games have been using in the sense that the player is interacting with the environment and the environment produces some sounds and music. Creative coding is demo scene and there's also the P5 community that does lots of visual examples with music. So I see Bitrhythm as being useful for creative coding, interactive coding, and somewhat useful for algorithmic coding and somewhat useful for live coding. I believe if I add some more DSLs, I can make it more uh, amicable for live coding. There's also physical coding. These days, I remember reading about multiple art installations where people are dancing on real life drums, drum pads and there's music. I have not explored this, but I would definitely like to try this approach. Uh, I think WebSockets is one way I could do it, but I'm not... Uh, sure how fast web sockets are with regards to implementing OSC on top of them. Now machine coding is also some uh, something quite interesting. There are plenty of YouTube videos uh, where a robot is seen playing the guitar. So now when it comes to what I see Bitrhythm actually doing, it, I'm calling it hard coding. The demo scene community also calls this executable music. So here for me, music is data and it's not an algorithm. And I'm using a tracker notation. I'm using basic state logic. I'm using some static constraints with observers to create a song. I am not using randomness. There's no machine learning here. And this is, uh, quite, uh, this is quite similar to chip tunes and quite similar to tracking music as well. So to give a conclusion, I think code is the new music sheet in some sense. Uh, the C sound programming language already uh, sees itself this way. And I think you can also begin to see JavaScript in a similar light. Now, can a text-driven interface replace and improve over TOR workflows without sacrificing quality? Now, this was something that I presented in the introductory text of this talk. I believe when it comes to the sequencing part, 
the text driven approach has its advantages but mastering and sound design are better done in ui because they require a level of visual intuition for uh, it to be right when it comes to a text driven interface for sequencing you have copy paste which is extremely flexible and you can copy from your previous projects very quickly uh, chunking is what i would describe as writing functions and utilities and this allows you to compress a very complex piece of information into a simple one word which you can remember chunking is uh, a very important part of text driven approaches i believe and for prototyping i really like this it is almost up to the mark with my electribe which i love to jam with uh, because of the sequence notation i am able to quickly prototype my ideas and as this is javascript in case i need any complex ui i can easily program it and there are some good ui libraries available that provide all sorts of widgets for audio composition now least but not the least the big advantage of a text driven approach is a diff so you can uh, you can see a diff from your previous versions of the track that you have composed and so this for i have uh, what i have done is i have created a simple directory watcher which uh, which basically watches a directory for every time i save a file to the directory and that way i am able to see the diffs of all the changes i have made to this track so this was the first uh, diff that is there and now this is quite tricky to do in a doi file but i would love to see this uh, replicated somehow because a lot of projects Uh, having multiple files is a very bad practice i would like to see a diff between multiple project files now wrapping up uh some of the limitations i've encountered were with uh, reverb and javascript Uh, reverb is extremely expensive it seems and this has been a, the biggest limitation for me uh, when it comes to some gui interactions there is uh, some glitch that sometimes happens uh, I, but i'm pretty sure it will be corrected in the future the timer could be more accurate i'm using a very inaccurate timer set interval but uh, there is a there is another timer within tone js that i used earlier but it was giving me an error so i reverted back to set interval and the biggest one for me is i wish i could live stream this and play live code for you guys but there's a huge latency when it comes to screen recording so this is something i'm not sure how to fix i've tried it on a more powerful machine as well and it seems to be uh, showing glitches there as well uh, now this limitation for me is a, a big one so in the future i believe i believe i have created a prototype which demonstrates some potential at least uh, i want to create a 90 minute set with this which uh, tries to you know uh, it's sort of like a stress test for the system i also want to enable some web socket based collaboration and have a better way to record the entire performance where i where i am recording all the textual changes as well now alternate implementations is also something i'm very keen on as you can see most of the ideas here are quite rudimentary uh, and they can be implemented in any language i believe i am looking for towards a c and relib approach in case the latency is unavoidable perhaps that could be the answer i am also very keen on exploring a juice based vst that is going to uh, replicate the sequencer notation and uh, elementary is another javascript library which uh, has its dsp primitives in c++ c sound web is also something i wish i can port this project to uh, mainly because it's such a well tested project uh, but the only concern i have is 
uh, will I get the timing information and will I be able to replicate the knob movements accurately within C Sound Web? Gibber is one more JavaScript project which uh, which can also use uh, an approach that I've taken here, like hard coding. And that brings me to the end of the talk. Uh, now, this project has uh, further inspired me to pick up more projects and continue exploring web audio. Twixter is one such project which I want to design uh, uh, experimental interfaces for uh, pianos and guitars. I also have a build your own data flow engine ebook that I'm trying to write inspired by pure data. I think the ideas in pure data can be used to write even normal web apps. And you can explore most of my links on my website. I'm on a self-hosting spree, so I'm kind of hosting all the things on my system. Uh, you can support me on Gumroad. And if you have any feature requests, I will be able to honor them if you support me on Gumroad. Uh, I'm also trying to uh, review some of the music done in the tracking community, chiptune community, and uh, the algorithm community, and all these coding communities that are uh, interacting with music. So there's a newsletter uh, that's I've just recently started on Substack, and you can subscribe to that as well. And uh, I'm open for the questions now. I'll just uh, open the credits page so that you can see the projects that I've built on. Great. All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, Skizzy. So just a round of applause here in the in person event. And we've probably got time for a couple of questions. So I think we'll take uh, one from the in-person event. And then if anyone's got questions online, post them in the Q&A uh, and I can read them out. And we'll get those answered as well. So if we've got any questions from anyone in the room. Oh, yeah, we've got one in the back. We've got Tom there. Pass you the mic if you can read it out. Um, it seemed like I, I didn't quite understand, but it seemed like um, on your timer loop, you reevaluate all of the code every, every time. Yeah. Is that correct? I, I reevaluate all of the code. Cool. That's good. I mean, if you can, if it's fast enough, because any changes, are, everything gets updated, right? Mm, yeah. Good. Okay. That's interesting. So that means that you um, define an event, you know, far in the future, for example. Uh, if you change your mind, uh, it will not happen, for example. Yep, you can uh, define uh, the song, all the future events, and you get to control the future events in some sense. You can use state for that. So anything that you can remember, you can control. Thank you. Great. Do we have any online questions? I can't see any in the Q&A. Just open it up. So it doesn't look like we have any uh, online. Um, I had a quick question. Um, so you say, um, I mean, I, I'm just wondering sort of how complete this is. So you, you as a... As a um, you know, music producer making your own tracks. Do you can you primarily use this for your for your door, or do you find yourself kind of going between this for, you know, maybe uh, coming up with inspiration and then and then going into a, a sort of quote unquote proper door to do the the actual. Production? So for for the mastering part, I need a door. That is the web audio is still nowhere near the quality that you would expect. There are some plugins, uh, WAM plugins that are being worked on. Uh, but for mastering, I definitely need a DAW. For most of the track composition, however, I can do it with this. Currently, it's a bit fragile in the sense that uh, I am the only user for this system now. Uh, I think after some iterations, it would be useful for a wider community as well. Great. All right, well, if there's no more questions, I think we can, um, we can end. Oh, we've got one on the online Q&A. It's just come in at the last minute. 
Uh, so he says, um, considering that you mentioned Fruity Loop sequencer annotation and Reaper script bits, do you think it's possible to export the sequence out to those doors? I think that's actually an excellent suggestion. Uh, I think so, because it's simply raw data. 